7.2 is geometric sequences. So yesterday we did the arithmetic sequences and the geometric ones aren't any harder. So the geometric sequence is a rate that it has a ratio of any term except the first one to the previous term is a constant called the common ratio. So with the arithmetic sequences, we had a common um, difference, a D, common difference value. And this one, you will have a common ratio. So ratio means when you divide the second term by the first term, do you get the same number if you divide the third by the second, or the fourth by the third, or the 20th by the 19th? So it's always one term <coughs> divided by the term just before it. The general term for the geometric sequence is Tn. Now remember that just meant your nth term is equal to A, which is your first term, times R, which is now your common ratio, to the power of n minus 1. And n here is an element of natural numbers. And again, remember, natural numbers are your counting numbers, like 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot. They're whole numbers. You're never going to get an n value that is a fraction. Okay, so if you do that, you, you've made a mistake somewhere. Go back and find it. Okay, so tn is the nth term, a is the first term, r is a common ratio, and if r is greater than 1, so if you're multiplying by a number that's greater than 1, like 2, 3, 4, 5, then you're going to get growth. But if the ratio is less than 1, then you have decay. You probably remember when you did um, exponentials that we did the same kind of work where you had growth and decay and decay was a fraction because it would be like a half-life of something and this was like doubling time, right? Remember that? It wasn't that long ago. Okay, so let's crunch some numbers here and we'll go through a bunch of different examples. And of course, there is also a recursive formula as well for a geometric sequence. So the half-life of a radioactive substance is 10 minutes. How much of a 500 gram substance will remain after eight hours? So you're probably thinking, I've seen this before. We did this in, in exponential functions. So you, you had another equation that you used for that one. This one, because it's considered a part of a sequence, it's going to be just a little bit different. And I'll show you why. How many time periods have gone by in eight hours? So every 10 minutes, eight hours. So you need to know, first of all, how many minutes is eight hours? Eight hours is how many minutes? How many minutes in an hour? 60, right? So eight times 60 equals 480. <clears throat> That's a number of minutes. So how many times was the, um, was the amount halved. So 480 divided by 10. So we're going to divide 480 by 10. And that's going to give us 48. So there's going to be 48 times that we're going to have this number. So now you go to the formula. So that was Tn equals A times R to the N minus 1. And all you have to do is substitute in what you know. So my A. Remember, anytime you're doing a question, write down an information box of how many things you know so you know what to plug in. So my A is 500. That's my starting. And the um, and this is the tricky part. But what is R? So it says the half-life. So if you had written out the sequence yourself, it would go something like this. 500. 250, 125, right? So here we are, we're dividing by half, by half, by half, dot, 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 so 64.5 and so on. So this is my sequence. So this is my first term, this is my second term, this is my third term, and I want to know how many will remain after 48. Now, the question here is, this is where... It's just a little bit tricky because my common ratio, well, that was easy, 250 over 500, 125. So remember the common ratio, you divide the terms. So that was one half 
or you could have done 125 over 250 if this was the sequence you were given. But it said it's half life, so I know my R is one half. Now the N is where we come into a little bit of problems because you may think that the N should be 48, right? That's what you would say because you'd say, oh, that's 48 times. But 48 is not, this is going from here to here is one half life. This is two half lives. Three half lives would be my fourth term. Four half lives would be my fifth term. So you can see that this number is actually one less than the number of terms. So I want to raise this. This the end, the forty eighth term is actually going to be t forty nine. This is t forty nine. So that means you had 48 half-lives. So are you understanding this? So if I said, oh, I did one half-life and I was at number T2. So my N here has to be 49. My nth term. It's not the number of times that you've halved it. It's what is the term number. So that's the big distinction here that you have to be careful with that you don't use 48 here. So now I would go to Tn equals A, 500, times R, R is 1 half, to the N minus 1, so that's 49 minus 1, and that would be 500 times a half to the 48th power. Um, I'm going to ask you to be very careful about something here because I know someone will do it out there. Do not multiply these numbers together. This is a bed mass rule. You must do the exponent before you do the multiplication. And if you do all that, oh, let me just see what the answer was to that. It's a really big number. No, oh, can't find it. So let's just do it here. So I'm going to do 0.5 to the power of 48 times 500. And I get 1.5. Seven. We'll do the two decimals, 1.78 times 10 to the minus 12th. So it's a very, very small number. And if this was grams, so that would be the grams left over and you'd have a concluding statement. Okay, so again, watch this. This is the tricky part to make sure you're using the right n value. Now, if you used your old formula for exponential um, growth and decay, remember you did this number this equation, the mass at time t is equal to the initial mass times one half to the power of t, right? So it was the mass at time t, you weren't finding the nth term, you were just finding the mass and your t here, so I would have said the mass at time t would be 500 times one half to the power of 48. So you can see that that equation and this one would be the same once you've subtracted this one because we're talking about terms here, the nth term. Okay, so just be really careful with that. Hopefully I've made that clear enough for you. Okay, so let's go to this question here. It says a colony of bacteria doubles every 20 minutes. If you start with 20 bacteria, how many will you have after four hours? So again, we're back to the same um, it's the same kind of question as the one that I just did for you. And what you need to do here is identify A, R, and N. So you started with 20. That's your first term, T1. Your common ratio, it doubles every 20 minutes. So doubles means you're going to multiply by 2. So your ratio is 2. So in other words, it would be going like this, right? 20, 40, 80, 160 and so on. That's your sequence. And again, the common ratio, 40 over 20. 80 divided by 40, 2, right? Okay, how many will you have after 4 hours? So 4 hours, 4 hours equals 60 times 4 is 240 minutes. And it doubles every 20 minutes. So 240 divided by 12 is going to be, what's that, 1, 2, right, 12. 
So I have 12 doubling periods. So your first number here, this T1 up here, that's that hasn't doubled yet. So one doubling period means T2. Two doubling periods means T3. Hopefully you've caught on to this now. Four, uh, T4, four, this is three doubling periods, right? One doubling period is T2. Two doubling periods is the third term. Three doubling periods is the fourth term. So that means that my N here has to be 12 plus 1 or 13. That's the tricky part. Okay, so now I'm going to say Tn equals A, it's 20, times R, R is 2, to the power of N minus 1, so that's 13 minus 1. So um, I should have put a number in here for N. I'm looking for the 13th term. So you don't, don't write Tn when you're given, you're looking for the 13th term. Okay, so now I do, don't multiply these. Remember, this first, to the power of 12 times 20. To the power of 12 times 20 gives me 81,920. Okay, and then you give your concluding statement. I'm not gonna do that, you can do that part. Okay, so now to the recursive formula. So I know, it, for some students, this always seems really confusing, but all it is talking about again is how do you relate the next term to the previous term? So for the recursive formula for geometric, it's a really easy one because you say, well, the first term is three. And any other term, Tn, is going to be, well, what's my r value here? What am I multiplying by? If you can't do this in your head, and surely by the time you're in grade 11, you know how to get from 3 to 15 is times 5, and 15 times 5 is 75. You want to check a couple of them to make sure that it is a geometric sequence to start with. That's part of your homework, right? Is this geometric, arithmetic, or neither? Okay, so my Tn is going to be, any term, is going to be 5 times the previous term. This just means the previous term, right? The one before it, Tn minus 1. And you must also say that n is greater than 1 because I can't put in 0 here. That would give me the, the term before it. And if I put in 1, then I would be multiplying this by itself, which is really just the fifth term. So n is greater than 1 and n, little n, is an element of capital N, again, natural numbers. So that's your recursive formula. So let's try one here. Let's do 5D from your homework. And this one is going to, you're going to give the general term and the recursive formula. So your first term. So let's write down what we know here. So A is equal to five. What's R equal to? You divide minus 15 by five, what do you get? Minus three right? Minus 15 over 5 is minus 3. 45 divided by minus 15, that's also minus 3, and so on. You should do a couple of them just to make sure. So r is negative 3. You can have a negative ratio. You can have a fractional ratio. And the general term, so remember we just use our formula, tn equals a times r to the n minus 1. And tn, a is 5, r is minus 3 to the power of n minus 1. And again, I advise you, do not multiply these. Do not multiply. I've seen it before. It'll happen. But remember, this is the exponent law. That's it. That's all. You're done. That's the general term right there. So what's the recursive formula? Well, going back to what we did here, we said you have to identify the first term. So there's first three steps here. Identify it, write it in terms of the next term. What's your ratio times the previous term? This is just ratio times the previous term, right? That's all it is. And then give this little statement as well. So in this case, I say, well, the nth term is equal to, um, we're using our common ratio of minus three. So minus three times 
the term before it, where n is greater than 1 and n is an element of natural numbers. Woohoo! That wasn't so bad, was it? Okay, now on to a couple more homework questions, some that are a little trickier than others. Um, this one here, 8C, let me just see what they're asking for. I kind of lost that along the way. I guess they're looking for the general term and the recursive formula, of course. Okay, so we have the first term and the second term. So that's our A. A is 144. What is our R? Well, R is the second term divided by the first one. So the sequence would be going like this, right? And I want to know what this term is. I need to know how did I get from this term to this one. So what's 36 divided by 144? So 36 over 144, um, well, it's a quarter, but I'll show you on a calculator. You might, you might not know that right away. You would have got 0.25, and of course 0.25 is a quarter. So R is one quarter. So Tn equals 8 times R to the N minus 1. Now I just plug it in. The nth term would be the first term, 144, times R, which is 1 quarter, to the N minus 1. Very easy general term. You don't have to, you don't expand anything like you did with the common difference uh, formula, the general term for, for arithmetic. So that's all you have to do. Done. So that's your general term, general, and the recursive formula. Again, the first thing you do is you state what the first term is. And then your nth term is going to be your common ratio, one quarter, times the term before it. That's it. n is greater than 1, n is an element of natural numbers. Don't let this recursive formula bog you down. It's not difficult. Cursive. Okay? Now, the last question I'm going to do is number 11 from your homework. It's a little trickier because they want you to give the general term and find T20, I believe. If I turn on my computer, I might know. Okay, so let's take a look at what they're given here. You have the fifth term and the eighth term. So this is kind of like we did these in the arithmetic where we were given, you weren't given the A value and you don't know what the R value is, right? I don't know. I have 45, so this is my T5, and then I have T6, T6, I don't know, T7, I don't know, T8, yeah, I know it, it's 360. So the question is, how do I get from 45 to 360? What am I multiplying by to get each term? Obviously, they're getting bigger, so I know it's bigger than 1. Now, you could sit here all day and try some numbers. Times 2 would be 9180. Ooh, I got it already. 9180, 360. Okay, well, let's say it was harder than that. Because they, they do get harder. That was too easy. So, say you didn't even think to do that. But you know that you're going from the fifth term to the eighth term. Fifth term to the eighth term. So how many times? One, two, three times you multiplied something by some number, right? So you have three times. And how far did you go from 45 to 360? What is the ratio of those terms? So what we have here is 360 divided by 45 is equal to r cubed, right? I went three times. I multiplied something three times to go from here to here. So 360 divided by 45, get out your little calculator. Ooh, I'll do it over here on the side without you seeing, and I get 8. So 8 is equal to r cubed. What's r equal to? Well, you know, to find the cube root of something, you would find the cube root of 8 is r, so r is equal to 2. So you know that 2 is your common ratio. Now it's asking you to find the 20th term, and they did tell you it was a geometric sequence, so you wouldn't know what to do. You wouldn't know whether it was arithmetic or geometric without this statement. So I'm trying to find the 20th term. 
So you can do this from either T5 or T8. I'm going to try it from, let's do from T5. So from T5 to T20, that would be 15 increases, right? 15 times I've multiplied by some common ratio. So that means the 20th term would be, and I'm starting with T5, so that's kind of become my A, although it's, it's not really an A value, but it's my starting point. So I went from T5 and I multiplied by something and I know what that something is. So I said I multiplied by 2 15 times. So 2 to the power of 15. And that's going to give you some huge number. I wish this was my bank account. There. Now let's say I didn't use T5. Let's say I decided I wanted to use T8. So from T8 to T20 would be 12 increases. So that means my 20th term is going to have to be 360 times 2 to the power of 12. And lo and behold, it gives you the very same number. Okay, so a little bit different than the arithmetic. Um, where we have a type of exponential growth. You should recognize the common ratio for your terms. And this little formula for finding um, your R value is, is handy so that you can find another term down the road. Okay, hope that's helpful to you. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And um, next we'll be doing series. Bye for now.